Oi, this is Max Cavalera, SoFly, here in Germany. You're watching pitcam.tv. Deutsche. Hello, hello, everybody. I am Armin for Pitcam TV, and I'm here with Max Cavalera. How's it going? Very good, man. Good to be here. All right, so we're here at the uh, with Full Force Open Air in Germany, and uh, it's a festival you played a lot. Uh, I remember seeing you like exactly 10 years ago playing here, and how are you liking it so far? Uh, very good, man. I love the festival, you know, it's great, and uh, we got invited uh, this year to close the festival headliner the last day, and it's a good, great spot for us. You know, we play all the other. Uh, Full force before it was great, but I think to, you know we're gonna try to make it even better tonight. Make give a real good show, try to really make a killer one. Uh, I love Germany. I love playing here. We got great fans here, you know. So I think it's gonna be a, a exciting show, a very good show. All right, so we're looking forward to that. Um, so you've been touring a lot already since your uh, latest album came out. Um, how's the perception so far of the new stuff? It's going good, you know, we're not one of those bands that only do new stuff, you know, we still play old stuff mixed, you know, it's so we are playing some stuff out of Enslave, we start the show with the World's Come and we play Gladiator and uh, Blato Plomo with Tony singing and we do Intervention, but we also play all stuff from all Soulfly records, this is 15 years of Soulfly, you know, it's a special date for us. So we play a little bit of every every record, you know, a little bit of Force One, a little bit of Primitive, a little bit of, of Three, a little bit of Prophecy, you know, uh, all the way until, you know, Enslaved. And of course, some samples of classics that people still want to hear from me, you know, Troops of Doom and, um, you know, Arise and uh, Roots, Bloody Roots, you know, so I still do that. And uh, yeah, it's a great show, you know, it's a really uh, exciting set. It's, the tour is great. We, been in Europe now for one month. Uh, we've been to Bulgaria, Romania, Czech Republic, um, uh, and it's been really, really awesome. Really great tour. So I'm sure fans uh, will appreciate that you're doing the mix uh, from old songs and new songs, of course. Um, so uh, there have been lineup changes um, uh, throughout the whole history of uh, Soulfly, and also this time for this album. Um, can you tell um, how much influence do uh, new members uh, in the band have, or is everything ready in your head before? Um, a lot of it was ready in my head. I, I wanted Enslaved to be a heavier record, a more extreme record from the beginning. I wanted to make this different record from Omen, you know, that was Soulfly's last record. So I, I started writing more uh, brutal stuff, and but they, they, they help, you know. I have a drummer like Dave Kincaid, which is really good with double bass. and. Very, you know, he's he he knows about death metal and plays how to play death metal. You know, he's influenced by Pete Sandoval and you know uh, Dave Lombardo and people like that. And Tony Campos is a great guy to have in a band. He's a killer bass player. He's great live, a lot of energy live. So I, I think this might be so far like one of our best lineups that we had so far. It's very tight, very connected. We get out there and just you know, unleashed brutality, you know, so it's, it's, it's awesome. So they unleashed power on the stage, really, not, not, in, not in the studio before? Yeah, it starts in the studio, you know, we try in the studio to make it as, as powerful as possible, but live is better, you know, live is when it's real happening, you know, nothing compares to, to live shows, you know. Um, even the, the songs become different live when you start playing them live. Some songs change live and become completely surprises. And uh, we notice uh, the, the on you know on this tour already that stuff like Worlds Come is a very powerful beginning, very very killer opening. You know, it's kind of a weird tempo song. It's not fast and it's not slow. It's like mid tempo, but it's a really great uh, opener. But uh, yeah, we try to to go out there and do our best uh, show possible every night, you know, we try to give 110%. Okay, um, so so that you're the only constant member of Soulfly and, and carry the, the most uh, responsibility, do you feel kind of a special pressure because of that? Is there anything like that? No, I love Soulfly, man, you know, I, I, I love music, I sleep, breathe, you know, drink music all day long, you know, I'm a fanatic, you know, uh, so for me, this is not a job, it's a lifestyle, you know. I love being a metalhead, you know. 
my whole life I've been a metalhead and uh, you know I relate to it I relate to the fans feel like we're part of some kind of army together you know a tribe or something you know so um, and I, I I made a promise when I made Soulfly I was gonna do whatever it takes to get Soulfly going to to get Soulfly name out in the world even with the even with the member changing I was still no never give up always carry on the flag of Soulfly and here we are 15 years later now it's even we get emails now from Iran and Iraq and Indonesia you know and you know. Uh, Far away places that I never thought my music was, you know, heard. We hear now it's being, you know, you know, popular in this part of the world. So it's giving even more motivation to keep going. Okay, so, so you're visiting, uh, you visited many, many different countries and uh, worked with uh, musicians from many different countries. So it it is already a kind of a worldwide soul flight tribe, kind of, isn't it? Yeah, it is. You know, it's and it's great. You know, I love being part of that. Um, I love when fans from different parts of the world say that they they spread so fly and there's even one is a website called Max Cavalera in Iran. <laughs> one fan made it and it's incredible. And I went in there and say hi to him and you know he almost had a heart attack that I was correspond you know correspondent with him. But I like to go on, on an email sometimes and, and check out and talk to fans. I do a webcam from home. Some, every uh, you know every two months I go and say hi and do like a, a interview kind of thing with the fans. It's really great, you know. So I like to keep in touch with fans around the world. Like I say, we're like a tribe, you know. It's uh, I feel like we're part of a tribe or an army or, or something like that, and it's just really I'm, I'm very proud to be part of this, you know. Oh, great to hear that. Um, when, when you're recording the music or when you're writing it, are there kind of downtimes and how do you manage to get out of those and how do you keep up the tension, keep up the power? That's a job between me uh, as a band leader and uh, writer most of the songs and Zeus, the producer of the record. You know, he produced the Enslave record and he did a great job. You know, I love working with Zeus and we really had a good chemistry going. We were working for the same goal and we just try our best you know you have to kind of visualize my my in my mind is a song that starts in my living room or in my kitchen which is a really small beginning it becomes a song that spreads throughout the whole world and then next thing you know you're playing a festival like this and you got thousands of people singing that song so it's a it's a great uh, process you know from start to very very little very small become something really big very popular so I love that the, the way music happens like that and and you get surprises of songs like uh, Eye for an Eye it's becoming a, a huge song for me you know and it was a song written on the first record you know and it was like uh, you even have on your, say on your dog tag lyrics from it you know it's uh, it's an incredible song and I closed the show with it and it gets stronger and stronger because we get everybody singing Eye for an Eye and it's great and this is similar to Roots, you know, when I play Roots, Bloody Roots, we get the whole crowd singing. I love those kind of songs that chants, you know, that you can do with your fans and become like just this huge, you know, voice when you play live and it's very, very uh, uh, powerful, very powerful when you, when you do it right. When you get a fast voice, everybody sings that, it's very powerful, it's awesome. Indeed it is, indeed it is. So um, when you're coming out w with new stuff, are you um, afraid of disappointing fans or, or critics? There's always a risk. I mean, I learned early in sepultural career when I did Morbid Visions. Some people didn't like it, you know. <laughs> you have to learn to deal with, you know. Uh, it, it, most important is you believe in yourself, you believe in what you're doing. If you believe in what you're doing in your heart, you know it's right, you know, you feel it's right, and you're not doing it for the wrong reason, you're doing it for the right reasons, then you have to put away the criticism, you know. But sometimes criticism is good, you know. I use criticism uh, sometimes to, you know, help me up a little bit. Sometimes uh, when I think I'm not giving enough to the band or to the music, I read something bad about me, so I get mad, I go on the stage and try to do something better you know so criticism is good also you know but I learned very early that you cannot please everybody it's, it's, it's impossible and you don't want to you, 
it's not the right way to please everybody. You, you, you're gonna do something wrong if you do that. So you just have to do what you what you think is right, you know, and and stick to it. Okay, I totally uh, agree on that. That maybe counts for everything in life, right? Um, but do, do we make a difference between uh, between criticism that comes from fans on the one hand and from pros like music magazines on the other hand? Is one of the uh, one of the other more more valuable, maybe? Well, they both can be both can be valuable, you know. Uh, Sometimes I think the the fan Chris is a little bit more real because they are the ones that are you know real into your music you know and sometimes a magazine critic you know sometimes they review your album it's not, it's not even his kind of music or you know he so he reviews it I don't like this shit like he shouldn't even be reviewing in the first place you know so he's like you know it's stupid you know but from most of the time from fans when I when I hear his criticism I take you know I pay attention to it. Okay, so let's go into another field for a moment. Um, wh when you look way, way back to the very beginning of your career and the old days of, of Sepultura and how you started, and when you look at you now, what you achieved, um, are you satisfied with everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it's been a, a, a really cool career. You know, it started in the most unlikely places like Brazil, which is not famous for heavy metal you know and we put heavy metal in a map with Sepultura and uh, it was great while I was in there I created great music and I was very, I'm very proud of the records I made with them but Soulfly started as a new chapter and I had the opportunity to create something new with Soulfly I took that chance I took that challenge and created and I'm very proud of Soulfly too so to me it's my career is very a big continuation. I don't really look back that much. I look more forward, you know, to the future. You know, I'm already thinking of the next record. You know, so I'm not. I don't live in the past that much. Okay, but still, the Sepultura is, is a is a great name, and um, I know that you consider yourself as a as a spiritual person. And, and when you look at the uh, old Sepultura lyrics and and song titles, it was very evil or, or Satanist-like even. W what do you feel w when you think about that time now? Uh, I like the rebellion of it, you know, because we, we were, you know, angry about something. And, you know, what, what, I, what I said about in those records, I still believe in that, because you know, I don't like organized religion. I think it's wrong, you know, and I think it's like forced religion is wrong. So it's stuff like morbid divisions and in the best of devastation, you know, I, I'm not, I don't regret it, you know, I think it's, but it was time for me to find my own identity and, and those records really were like heavily influenced by stuff like, you know, Destruction and Celtic Frost and Slayer, you know, and we need to find our own identity. That's why we started making records like Beneath the Remains and Arise that were more us, you know, I started making lyrics like Inner Self was really about my life, you know, it's like, rather than, you know, some other satanic stuff. And I think it's it's cool, but you had to go to the process of, of getting through the satanic phase, you know, that, that kind of beginning, you know, rebellious phase to get to where you are now, you know, so it's, I'm very proud of it. Okay, um, so maybe you heard that um, Roadrunner Records is uh, facing massive cutbacks and it is said that they want to close uh, Europe's offices. Um, do you think uh, uh, it might change for you, for the bands and for the fans? Are you free to comment on that? Yeah, I mean, we gotta wait and see. It's a crazy time, you know, a lot of really close people to us, uh, you know, unfortunately don't work with us anymore and very sad, you know, it's, uh, it's a definitely a, a, a end of an era when you have you know when you don't work with people like like hank and monty connor and case west so all these great name people that built the label with us you know we i'm the oldest guy in that label you know i've been there since 1989 you know it's a long time to be on that label and uh i hope they figure out something a way to to keep the label going you know i think that's most important even though it's un Uh, owned by Warner, I hope they still keep the name Roadrunner because it's a very you know special record label for a lot of metalheads in the world. 
indeed, uh, indeed it is. I hope so too. So I, I want to close uh, with um, w with your family, with your sons. They're making music too, and they're c contributing. Um, I'm sure you must be uh, really proud of them. Um, is it what, what does it mean to you? Is it an inspiration for you or for others even? Yeah, I actually took my uh, young son out of school to go into music. I don't know if that was a best decisions but I look at my life and I quit school to go into music and he came to me one day say I don't want to go to school anymore I just want to do what you do you know <laughs> so I say okay man you know but you have to take serious this music shit you know you're very very focused you know and not change your mind next year I want you know go do karate or something you know that's not gonna work here you just have to stay strong in the music you know so but they are doing good you know they're here with me right now they actually do a song tonight called Revengeance uh, I bring Richie and Igor um, Zion's at home unfortunately he stay at home but we got two of them here so they come on the stage and do a song with us it's really cool so uh, and, and they got both you know Richie's got Insight is a really cool band putting the second record now and Igor and Zion have Lodi Kong which is kind of real noisy punk kind of metal punk kind of band like kind of you know like a little bit like you know old old school punk rock uh, which so it's really really you know cool to have them it's a it's a music family you know always around music you know my life my house is like crazy like during the day you hear drums banging and they go in the room and practice real loud and I cannot even watch TV you know I gotta turn the TV on a full volume so if I want to watch a movie or something but it's cool it's a great great house I love our house I love I love the chaos of the house you know it's, it's, I wouldn't trade it for anything okay um, so it's, it's cool to see that there's so much dedication in it and maybe you're, you're a, role, a role model for other people and they do the same so um, yeah I think that's it uh, what are your last friend, uh, words for the fans out there well danke schön thank you very much I love uh, play Germany it's gonna be a great show tonight and we're going to be back in October, November for a headline tour, hopefully playing other cities in Germany. I hope to see everybody there. So, thank you. All right. You heard it. I am Armin for Pitcam TV, signing out.